morning. Today I'm going to do a little bit different style video than I normally do. I'm going to do a vlog style video and I'm going to take you guys along with me for the ride. I am going to run some errands and incorporate some reselling into my day and kind of show you guys how I balance having three different jobs, which includes reselling. Yes, three different jobs and how I make reselling work and a busy lifestyle. So today I have to take my car to the shop. It's running low on brake fluid and it's a mini. And if you've ever had a mini or know anything about servicing minis, you can't just open up a mini and pour brake fluid into it. Everything with the mini service is super complicated. So I have an appointment. I'm gonna go drop that car off. They're supposed to give me a loaner. Fingers crossed that there's actually a loaner available for me when I show up. And after that, I'm gonna run some other errands. So come along with me for the ride and see how I incorporate reselling into a super busy day. If you're new here, my name is Wendy and this is Nina's Jewels. My husband and I buy things at garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere we can find things to sell online and flip for a profit. So let's head out to the day and see what we can get done. Bye Jordan, bye puppy. He's blind, he has no idea what's going on. Bye, Bratty. Bye, buddy. Bye, Bratty. All right, let's head out. All right, here's the car I am taking to the shop to get repaired. And I'll show you guys, hopefully, the loaner that they give me when I get back. So I just got in the car and turned it on to a new notification that my engine oil needed to be changed. So how's that for timing? I hope that they can incorporate that into my service. I'm sure they can, but I'm getting these three services done today. And um, usually the engine oil light would come on right when I got it home instead of right when I got it there, right before I left, but that worked out. Okay, so we're off to the dealer. All right, well, I'm here in my loaner car. They actually had a loaner car for me. I'm really surprised. And I made it to a little thrift store that I rarely come to. It's kind of far away from my house, but it was sort of on the way back home. So I decided to stop at it and we're gonna head in. I'm wearing a camera. I've never worn a camera in here. So I hope that goes okay, but we're gonna head in and see what kind of goodies we can find.
have a good day. Hi there. Hi. How are you? Oh, fantastic. 50 and 50. Yes, ma'am. Sure, sure. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, it's okay. $1.08. Okay. All I brought in with me is this, but I can run out to the car and get cash if you would prefer yeah, it. Yeah, we don't take okay. under five. Okay, let me run and do that. Okay, no problem. I'll be right back. All right, well, I just cut down at that thrift store. It was not great. It is such a cute and super well-organized thrift store. So I will be going back because I feel like it's the kind of place where you could just happen upon something really amazing. But as you can see, they did have like some eBay pricing on some items that was just not correct. That Avon duck that you saw me reference, they said that it was selling on eBay for like $80 or something like that. And I looked it up while I was standing there and it had uh, no listings that I could see, but a recent sold for $40. So you can never trust those signs. They're always based on incorrect information. They're always based on listed items, not sold listing. People who are um, placing signs like that are generally not eBay sellers and they don't really know how to properly comp on eBay. At least that's been my experience and I usually just walk right past those items, but I did want to look it up in this instance and show you guys you know, this is why you can't trust signs like this. Um, I did pick up two items though. Neither one of them are great, but um, I couldn't pass up this cute Neiman Marcus Fitz and Floyd. You can tell that it's Fitz and Floyd because it's marked with the FF on the bottom. Vintage mug. This was the only one like it. It didn't have any mates to go along with it. Looks like this will sell for about 20 to $25. It does have a little um, I don't even know if you can see it because it's so deep in there and it's so minor, but it does have like a little, there, you can see it, a little scuff mark inside of it, which I'll have to disclose. But other than that, it's in really good condition and it's just really cute. The other thing I picked up for also 50 cents was this um, Sweet Valley book, which is just going to go off to the side. We're making a lot of vintage Sweet Valley books. This one's from the 90s. So, um, you know, this isn't gonna get listed anytime soon. So I'm not even gonna include our photos of listings here in this video because this was just not a great sourcing trip. But it was fun to come back to this thrift store and it is like the best organized thrift store I've ever been to. Um, so anyway, now I'm gonna head back home. I'm gonna get a little bit of work done for another company that I work for where I am director of operations. It is a nonprofit consulting company and Today, I've just got to work on some, um, I guess, just processing of contracts and stuff like that. Nothing exciting, but uh, gonna go back home and get that done. I do all my work for that company from home, which is nice, very flexible. And then after that, I'm going to make some um, chicken tortilla soup with leftover chicken. So I'll show you guys the end results of that. All right, see you later. All right, so I've got all my prep work done and now I've got my pan heating up. The recipe calls for three tablespoons of corn oil. I never have corn oil in my pantry, so I'm substituting olive oil, which I almost always do for this recipe and just coating the bottom of the pan. Then I'm throwing in six rough chopped corn tortillas. And don't worry about the way you chop them, just rough chop them into big pieces like this because they're gonna break up into the broth pretty much. Then I'm adding in one tablespoon of fresh chopped cilantro. I usually use dried cilantro, that tastes just as good. I just happen to have fresh cilantro on this day. Then I'm adding in six chopped garlic cloves. And we like a lot of garlic, so I usually kind of go heavy on the garlic. And then at this point, you just want to stir this around so that you're coating the tortillas in the oil. And you want to cook this just long enough until the garlic and the cilantro becomes fragrant. You do not want to overcook it so that your garlic gets burnt. You just want to cook it for maybe up to a minute or two, just enough to get your, get that, um, the fragrance coming out of that, that garlic and the cilantro. 
So up next, I'm gonna pour in one cup of chopped onions. I had white onions. Um, I had some chopped already in my fridge left over, and then I had a half an onion left in my fridge. That was enough to make a cup, so I chopped all that up. And that's basically what the soup is. I'm using up what's in my fridge. And then this is about three quarters of a cup of fresh tomato puree. I had a handful of cherry tomatoes in my fridge and I pureed those. The recipe calls for one cup of tomato puree plus four tablespoons of canned tomato puree. But you'll see that I kind of did a substitution. So I did, you know, the fresh tomato puree um, with the tomatoes that I had left and then um, some tomato paste that I had in my freezer. So at this point, I am just cooking this on about medium to get that raw tomato taste out of there, maybe about 30, 45 seconds. You do not want to cook this for too long, just um, long enough to, to get that raw tomato flavor out of there, like I said. And then up next, I'm going to pour in eight cups of chicken broth. I actually had a kind of a Southwestern flavored chili based chicken concentrate in my fridge that I mixed in with water and used that for my chicken broth. That's why the broth is kind of red. Um, and I just thought that flavor would go really well with this soup. And then I'm adding in here one and a half tablespoons of tomato paste that I had stored in my freezer that I needed to use up and that's in lieu of the remaining tomato paste or tomato puree, sorry. And then next up, I'm gonna add in all my seasonings. This recipe calls for chili powder. I do two teaspoons of chili powder. And then it also calls for cumin and I do two teaspoons of cumin as well. And then it also calls for two bay leaves and I'm gonna pull those out of this bag. This bag has like kind of crunched up bay leaves in it. So I'm just pulling out the equivalent of two bay leaves. Throwing those in there. And then I'm gonna give it a stir. And at this point, you probably wanna turn your heat up to high because you want to cook this soup and it says for about 30 minutes, but I usually just cook it long enough until the onions in there are translucent. And um, then it also calls for salt and pepper, but instead of salt and pepper, I'm just doing some good old Lowry seasoned salt. Um, I use that in a lot of recipes instead of salt and pepper, and we opted to use that here, and it tasted really good. I don't know how much I added. You see, I just kind of poured it in by eye. And then I tasted it and it tasted perfect. So I didn't add any more seasoning. And so at this point, I'm gonna add in my chicken. This is leftover chicken that I had from a rotisserie chicken that we ate for dinner. My husband and I ate for dinner. And then I just took the rest of the chicken and shredded it up and it made about two cups of shredded chicken. So the chicken is really optional in this recipe. You can do this soup without chicken, but I usually do it when I have leftover chicken. So at this point I brought it to a boil and I let it boil until the onions in the soup were completely translucent. And that's pretty much when I think that the soup is done. So at that point I'm going to pull out the bay leaves. Nobody wants to bite into a bay leaf. Although if they do, I just tell them it's lucky or something, you know. <laughs> Pretend like it was on purpose. So now the soup is pretty much ready. I let it cool for a few minutes and we're gonna serve it up. We served ours with crunched up tortilla chips, shredded Mexican blend cheese, sour cream, a little bit of the leftover cilantro that we chopped and we did an avocado. We cut that in half and put those slices on top as well. This is one of our family favorites and you can find the recipe in the description box below. 
surprise, I ended up liking the loaner so much that they gave me that I ended up buying a new car the next day. So that was a surprise, but I don't regret it. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the like button. And if you're not already subscribed, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. And thanks so much for watching.